at 437. You need to do a roll call if you have anybody. I think I've got it. Do we have any public to be heard? Um, has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes from last month? Oh. I think it's a, I think I printed four. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't need one. I can bring it up on yeah. the screen. Yeah, there we go. Mm -hmm. Take a look. Do we have any corrections? Does anyone want to move to approve the minutes from July? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any accessions? Not as many as last week. <laughs> <laughs> I asked about the swan thing. This photo is getting small. Oh, okay. Sure enough. Sure is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So this gentleman, Tom Adler, came by the museum with actually two photos, one of Bill Stewart and one of Lila. The one of Lila, we have the exact same photo already in the collection, mm -hmm. but we did not have this photo of Bill. Um, we just overall have less photos of him, it seems. Yeah, um, a little more background. Mm -hmm. was a little more. Mm -hmm. So that's a good one if we ever, you know, need a photo to put in a pamphlet or something like that. Very small. Uh, <laughs> These things never go away. Okay. Uh, big shout out to Ann Macca for um, working with me and this group of uh, four. So we had that big giant mural. I don't know if you remember with like the wings and there were like very dark things underneath and it was. All created by these teen um, teens in the '90s that were part of this program at the youth center. Mm -hmm. um, so we got Norma Puerta Kelly was the kind of lead on this, and she shared with us the scrapbooks that she collected during this time, as well as some video footage. Um, so she's not giving the scrapbook to us; these things outright to us, but she is giving us the, the um, she gave them to me to digitize. So we would get back the originals, but then the digital content will stay in our collection. Cool. Video footage like on video tapes? Mm -hmm. That's for the <laughs> And it goes beyond just the working on the mural. They did other things together, like presentations on like sex ed and um, various different programs. Oh, yeah, interesting. Uh, Anne got 45 people to come a few weeks mm -hmm. ago to reconnect and talk about mm -hmm. And the mural will be part of Day of the Dead this year. Mm -hmm. This is another just one off. Um, I had a older couple who used to own the, uh, it's called the Longmont Forest on Collier. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so they are downsizing and moving into assisted living, and they had this abstract of title that I believe came from the previous owner before that because this is dated 1937. So uh, it tracks and lists the history of the property um, going back to the 1860s all the way to 1937. Hmm. Which is an interesting thing to archive that means I'm going to do research on that property. And uh, we got a call from the Times Call saying that this graveyard and newspaper boxes were all going to the scrapyard. So oh. I grabbed one for the collection, or oh, Angela grabbed one for me. Uh, and Angela also grabbed a couple other for a potential maybe public art thing. We'll see. Mm -hmm. uh, so this orange guy is now um, at the MCC. I like that it says, you know, the 50 cents. Uh, so yeah, a relic of the bygone era. Wow. When you said newspaper box, I had to Google it. I was like, I'm not sure what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, I said, yeah, I'm so oh, Now I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, and then a, another digital donation, um, Richard Jacoby, who lives over on the East Northeast Side and has recently come out with a book of his tour, um, which is available downstairs in the gift shop. He, I asked, I asked him if he would share all, because he went around and took a photo of every single property on his tour. And I was like, oh, can I have those for the collection? So she, he shared his photos with me, uh, even some of these houses, so they were photographed in 2022. Even some houses have changed in those two years, right? They're different colors or they've had additions to them. Uh, so we have other collections of houses from over the years. It's always nice to see that progression. I think that's it. Do we have any questions about any of the new questions? I assume these photos come with the addresses. Yes, I will have to do some cross-referencing with the book because <laughs> their yes. file numbers are just random numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, having the we have the physical book to go by. Oh, yes. mm -hmm. and they'll get cataloged under their as us. Okay. Any other questions? We have a motion to accept these sessions. So moved. Or second. All in favor? Unanimous? Direct carriage report. Um, so I have a few highlights. Um, sunset soiree, September 7th is kind of our big push for the capital campaign. We're doing a lot of work around that and um, we are really excited at ticket sales. Um, I know some of you have bought tickets. Thank you so much. Uh, any that haven't, uh, there's there's still some time, but uh, August 30 is the hard deadline for buying tickets or if they sell them. Um, but we're really excited about the potential for being able to raise some significant funds for expansion during this work. What's the capacity for this uh, 300. 300. 300. Yeah. Is our, uh, and that's the capacity seated at tables in kind of the hour portion of the courtyard. The total courtyard capacity is 700 if you're just seated as uh, uh, individual seats for a concert. So it's getting more folks there. Um, let's see. We um, did not, unfortunately, get a grant we had applied for to. Uh, fund our children's gallery, the fabrication of those exhibits. So um, we are uh, hoping that the uh, uh, city budget might come through on that. Um, if not, we'll have to kind of rethink and figure out a different way of, of uh, approaching that project as we look toward opening the expanded museum in 2026. Under exhibitions, um, just a note how popular the Lego exhibit has been. It's about triple the attendance of our last exhibit um, so far, and even with school back in session, we're still seeing very steady attendance uh, every day. Um, and um, we have a new member on the exhibits team, Ali Kotarski, who was actually a gallery attendant, um, and when a basically called a museum assistant position, it's kind of an entry-level exhibits position, came open and she applied, and it's really been, been doing great work. Do you want to highlight anything on the collections? Um, <coughs> only an a event in October for the 150th, 250th, so we're working on planning for that, and I think that's about it. Um, oh, I applied to a Greenwood Club Fund to potentially conserve Longhorn's first flag. Um, this flag has been in our collection since 1959. Uh, it is reportedly the first flag flown over Longhorn in 1871. Uh, so it's in, it's in poor condition. It came to the museum in poor condition. The newspaper in 1959 said that. So uh, if funded, this would cover the cost of a textile conservator to um, stabilize it and ready it for exhibit come that 150th, 250th uh, anniversary. 
Let's see. Um, summer camp has wrapped up on our um, education front. Uh, we had almost 500 campers this year, 37 camps over six weeks. Um, I think something to really note, 2,300 volunteer hours from our team volunteers um, because we brought the camps. Um, most of them were taught by museum staff instead of being contracted out. Uh, so when we contract out a camp, they're responsible for everything. We don't provide volunteers, but then we have um, in-house staff and they need volunteer support to run a camp. So um, shout out to Courtney Fletcher, our volunteer coordinator, for recruiting a lot more volunteers and, and uh, being able to allow us to do a lot more camps with in-house staff, which means just a little bit higher quality, a little more attention to detail, and just a lot more connection between the various camps than is possible with, with a contractor that comes in for one week and then is gone. So, uh, let's see. Art in public places. This is um, a proposal for um, the art uh, piece that will go in the new Clover Meadows Park. Um, so we should apply giant bicycle gears. Um, Clover Meadows is in southeast Longmont. Um, uh, southeast? Sorry, southwest <laughs> Longmont. <laughs> um, over kind of in the Clover Basin uh, area. And they're also doing a project in Fox Meadows. Fox Meadows, I think, is in northeast. Um, these are the winners of the shock art, the electric boxes around town that will be painted this fall. And it's under uh, adult programs, uh, summer programs have finished up. We have uh, three outdoor concerts and kids' films, I mean, summer concert, summer programs, and then to note, so far in 2024, we've had almost 100 uh, events uh, connected to our auditorium program. Uh, Sunset Soiree, again mentioned here, as of when this was written, we sold 173 tickets, we're now 218, so we sold 145 just since uh, this report was written. And you can see the difference here between attendance with our agriculture exhibit last summer versus Legos this summer. It's pretty, pretty dramatic. Mm. Um, and you can also see it in gift shop sales. 2,900 to 7,800 uh, in June and 2,500 to 4,600 in July. Um, and then the last thing I will mention is uh, you should all have gotten this in your mailbox. This is the fall program catalog as all of the activities going on at the museum this fall. Um, so uh, please take a look through it. Um, sign up for the ones you are interested in. We are in the midst of a website conversion right now. So um, we've had a little bit slower uh, program registration because a lot of energy is going into getting the new website up and running. It should go live Sunday night. Um, so that's going to be a big, it's, it's kind of a, a big effort because, you know, the city website is enormous and switching over thousands of pages. It's been quite a project. Um, so we are uh, hoping for a smooth launch uh, this week. Any questions on the director? Um, thanks. Okay. I don't have our 
report from the chair. Um, do we have any unfinished business we need to address? I have a question. Yeah. I had put um, kind of a, the director of the Front Range Foundation in touch with Megan um, mm -hmm. about the soiree. I was wondering if anything ever came of that. Does anyone know? We have not, they have not purchased a table or done a sponsorship to this point. I know she's been, you know, in touch with them a couple of times, um, but um, I don't think she's ever gotten anything. So now I know that the next time I see the director of the foundation to give her a hard time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, and then under new business, our September 18th meeting is going to be at the collection center. That's, that's what we would propose. I think it's been a while since we've been out there. I don't know how many folks here saw it the last last time the board went out. It's been at least two years. Two years. Oh, we both saw it. And, you know, Bob, you will not be here for the next meeting, so you'll miss it. But uh, certainly if you want to have a special tour at some point, we can be there. Um, so, um, I think we would need a motion from the board to approve a change of venue. Oh. Yeah. Well, I want to make a motion to. I move that we change the venue to the Museum Collection Center for the September 18th meeting. Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Same time. Yeah, be the same time. We'll send out. Uh, I guess yeah, we're <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know whether it's, sometimes it's easier to meet here and kind of caravan out there because it's you know you turn here and then you go down here and then you turn oh. again and it's 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 uh, out. You do it once. It's easy. Right, right. Once you've been out there, it's, it's pretty I think easy. it isn't. It? I remember right next door to the fire, uh, fire, fire range. range. Right. Yes. Right. I have not had yeah. a problem putting firing range into my TV. Yes. Right. If you, <laughs> if you do <laughs> Longmont firing range, it will find it. If you do the address, yeah. Yeah. it will sometimes send you to a field. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yes, when we have big trucks calling and saying, oh, I'm going to feel like, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> anyone shooting at <laughs> Do you hear gunfire? Go toward the gunfire. Wait. <laughs> and it's not even like very close. It's like on the other side of the highway. It's far away. Very, yeah. And, and we have submitted, I don't know how many times, to Google saying, this is the address of the building and it never takes so yes we will we will if, if folks want to meet here early and caravan over certainly glad to do that or um look up long month firing range do we have any other board comments I just wondered if you've had any feedback on the budget or you just get some So the, um, the budget will get announced. It goes to City Council on August 30th. Uh, so, yep, that'll be, all right, gets, you know. That's right, yeah, because right after then, we're already now starting to work on um, the evaluation for Harold and Eugene and the judge. So we're working, and that's kind of September. October, so yeah. yeah. The, the budget message will come out from Harold. Um, mm -hmm. you know, he has, both he and Jim Golden have expressed mm -hmm. multiple times that this is a very challenging budget year mm -hmm. um, because of both tax issues and, you know, still dealing with inflation leftover mm -hmm. from that. And um, it's a negotiation year for the um, public safety union and Mm -hmm. fire as well um, so the city does have the commitment to pay at all employees that at market you know looking at the average at market rate and so having have that be as part of their their mission and their goals they want to make sure that they're achieving that the, um, there are a couple of ballot measures 
And I believe that Governor Polis has started a special session to address taxes and property tax. And yeah, yeah, yeah. if they meeting. pass, that's going to be very detrimental to municipal, local government, school districts, education. education. I'm a teacher, so yes, <laughs> I'm freaking out. Um, so I think, you know, really kind of anticipating for what might happen. You know, essentially preparing for the worst and hope for the best kind of mentality, but ensuring that we have a balanced budget and rather than making commitments at this time to expand. I know I've been hearing a lot from the library as well, and you know, there are other services and the museum who I feel like we've underfunded for such a long time and we need to start prioritizing. But we also need to, you know, it, Harold could not emphasize enough with me that we need to really have a balanced budget because everything will fall apart if we don't have a balanced budget. So there, it's like, okay, I understand. But, you know, I think, you know, if we want these things, if we want these services, you know, we have to pay for them. <laughs> and it's hard, you know, and I think inflation and COVID, we're still dealing with some of the after effects of that and impacts to people's day to day. So I understand, you know, where the individual is like, I can't pay any more of these taxes, I can't do this stuff. So, you know, it's kind of trying to navigate through all that. Um, but yeah, I am worried about a couple of ballot measures this fall that could have negative impacts on um, the school districts, city governments, you know, that really hurt the local. The local. Group, so yeah, so that was a little bit of what we've been hearing on the council. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> on a happy note. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Somebody say something. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, we can get it going. <laughs> I make a motion that we do. Is there a second? All, right. All in favor? Unanimous. So we are adjourned, and I have 459. All right. Wow.